Hi everyone and welcome back to the show. My name is Jim Evans, President of Ganwell Security Partners and I thank you so much for taking some time to watch our video today. Today we're talking about using financial vehicles that can only go up in value. They can never decrease in value due to market fluctuations. Last night during the first presidential debate, um, we were hearing the two candidates talk about a potential market correction. Uh, Donald Trump in particular picked it up and ran with it a little bit, um, more so than Hillary, but I'm not, I'm not getting political here, I'm just talking about what they said. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of the financial analysts that I'm speaking to and advisors that our firm works with, they're also talking about the fact that they're keeping a lot of cash. They're not putting all of their clients' money in the market right now because they believe a stock market correction is imminent. So I wanted to do a little video today because there's options that you have without utilizing the stock market. There are vehicles that you can utilize to have long-term steady growth without going through that roller coaster of market corrections. So that's what I want to talk about today. All right, so let's talk about our current conditions. Okay? Again, we're not getting political, we're just talking about where we are right now as a country okay? in uh, the third quarter of 2016. So current conditions, we have slow GDP growth. Okay? So I don't think anybody would argue with slow, slow GDP growth. Um, it, it is growing, but it's not to the point of where uh, many economists believe that it is uh, good market conditions. We right now have manipulated interest rate risk. Now this is something that's all over the news. A lot of people are talking about it. The Fed is keeping interest rates low and that's allowing credit to be uh, cheaper, money to be cheaper so that it continues to boost the economy. They want people and businesses to have access to money as cheaply as possible because that's what's allowing them to keep this thing afloat without having a, a doomsday outlook, if you will. Okay, We are in an election year. Uh, let's look at the two candidates, 30,000 foot view. Again, not getting political here. Trump does scare the markets. Okay, There's unknowns there. We don't know what he's going to say. We don't know what he's going to do. And because of that unknown, he does scare the market. Clinton is out of tricks. And the reason that they say that isn't because Clinton can't come up with a good plan or what have you. The reason is, is because the trick that, oh, the, that President Obama has used up until now is utilizing the Fed, who is not political, they're their own entity, but utilizing them to keep interest rates low, to keep this quantitative easing going, and allowing our economy to have a little bit of growth without you know, this windfall of, of destruction of a market correction. So we can't keep that up. The Fed has already threatened that interest rate increases are a must. Um, a lot of financial analysts knew that it wouldn't be last week, uh, that it would definitely be either by the end of the year or early in 2017. But the good news is, is right now you have the ability, you have the chance to make a decision that's in the best interest of you. We know it's coming. You kind of have this insider view right now. You know it's coming. What do you do now to protect your money? Stock market is at historical highs. So when you really think about this, I mean, let's, let's be honest, okay? We have slow GDP growth. We have manipulated interest rate risk. We're in the middle of an election year. The Fed is saying we're increasing interest rates at some point, and the stock market is all-time highs. It doesn't really add up, right? So this is only adding to the point that we think we're going to have a market correction, and we're overdue for that market correction. So all of these things in our current conditions Paint a picture. This isn't to scare you. This video isn't saying, hey, we're hitting doomsday soon. Take your money and run. That's not what this is doing. This is saying that if you believe these conditions are true, if you're following current news and you know that these things are true, then if these are your asset classes, so we'll go through stocks, bonds, and funds. So I didn't break, I didn't break down funds as their own thing. So mutual funds, bond funds, ETFs. When you look at stocks, they have stock market risk. So if stock prices go down and you hold these individual stocks, well, it's, a, it's like not a rising tide lifts all boats, but a, a low tide is going to lower all boats, right? 
So this is this is stocks. Market risk. If you own this asset, you need to be at least concerned or or attentive to these issues. Let's say you hold bonds, fixed income. Now, again, a lot of people say, oh, well, I have bonds, I have more bonds than I have stocks. I'm not in equities, I'm more in fixed income. Maybe you're a little bit older, maybe you're a little bit closer to retirement, maybe you're just conservative and you've gone the route of bonds. Well, you have interest rate risk. So let me explain interest rate risk. If I have a bond that is current, I don't even need to draw this. If I have a bond that's currently giving me, let's say, 3%, 3.5%, and the Fed raises interest rates, and now interest rates go to 45 to 5% on similar bonds. Well, who's going to want your bond? Nobody. Because there's going to be new bonds that are going to be out there that are going to be kicking off higher interest rates. So that's actually going to lower the value of your bond. So if your bond's par is at 1000 Maybe somebody's only willing to give you $950 for that bond versus $1,000 because they want to invest less to get the same interest rate, so that way it, it makes sense to them. But nobody's going to spend over par or even par when they could do the same amount of money and get a higher interest rate. So that's why you have interest rate risk. So if we know that the Fed is saying, listen, at some point in the very near future, we are going to raise interest rates, then you have to be concerned if you have a large portfolio of fixed income and bonds. Funds, mutual funds, bond funds, ETFs, all of these things have market risk and interest rate risk. The only thing that they have in addition to that is transparency risk. The reason I say transparency risk is because if you have a mutual fund, you don't know what that portfolio manager for that mutual fund is actually holding. So you don't know what stocks, what bonds, um, what vehicles are inside of that fund because they don't have to tell you everything. They only have to tell you what the investment objective of that fund is. So the individual holdings of that mutual fund may not be known to you. And if it is known to you, it may not be in real time. So you have to look at that and transparency risk is kind of scary because you don't know these two things because you don't know what's inside. Okay. So these are your asset classes that have market risk okay so now let's talk about 2016 we have a thousand dollars worth of bonds stocks market securities whatever it is right and let's say in 2016 we end up right here okay and in 2017 we drop Maybe it won't be that drastic. I don't want to be. I don't want to scare anybody here. That's not the reason I'm doing this. I'm just showing you how it works. So let's say we decrease to there. Let's say this is a 20% loss, right? Now the market corrects. So this is we'll call this 2017, right? The market corrects a little bit in 2018 and then corrects big time in 2019, okay? Now you see how you have this up and down. We all know that this is possible. Maybe you get another big hike, maybe you get a fall. You know, the stock market could look like this. Maybe it's flat one year. That's what the market could look like historically. Look at any financial data and you'll see something that will resemble these types of spikes and losses, right? Well, imagine if you had a vehicle that rather than that, stayed here, started here, right, at the same level, right, but when you have market decreases, it stays flat. Now when you have market increases in 2018, it went up, you get a little bit of this, right, 2019, it jumped up big. So now you stay above where you would have, or maybe you're even in line with it. Maybe you're in line with this when it increases. The, the point is, is you're not going through these market fluctuations. You want to increase when the market goes up, but you want to stay flat in the years that the market goes down. Well, that's a great vehicle. You're saying, Jim, that I can take all of the stock market risk and fluctuations and not be bothered with it anymore. What's the catch? Okay. What's the catch 
to getting those type of benefits. Well, let's talk about the benefits and then we'll talk about the catch because I think they're going to definitely outweigh and you're going to see why you would do this. So, no stock market risk, principal protection. In years the market goes up, you get to go up. In the, in the years that the market goes down, you stay flat, right? Pretty beautiful. Steady growth in one direction. Again, this is another way of saying the exact same thing I said. You're only going in one direction. You're not dipping down. You're not only dipping down half. You're not dipping down at all. Once that contract year is up, you are flat. Okay, next year, start over. Follows an index, not an individual security. So we're talking about vehicles that are going to follow a broad index versus following one stock, one bond, um, even one asset class, one industry, right? One sector. It's not going to do that. It's going to follow an index, which means that if 90% of the stocks go up and 10% 10, 10 of the stocks go down, you don't have to worry about, was I holding those 10% that went down? You're following the index as a whole. So kind of, you almost have portfolio diversity um, just in itself, right? You have tax deferred growth. So as you have gains, you are not going to pay taxes on those gains until you pull that money out of that investment vehicle, okay? So it's gonna grow tax deferred. Liquidity, it's going to have liquidity. Now this investment, and one, this is one of the drawbacks, is it may have less liquidity than a normal brokerage account. But think about what you're getting for that decreased liquidity. I didn't say no liquidity, I said reduced liquidity. Now, in most cases, if this is a retirement account that you want to, you know, your old 401k that you have sitting at your job and you don't want it to go up and down, well, you really don't care anyway because, I shouldn't say you don't care, but liquidity isn't as big of a factor because when you're no longer at that employer and you rolled it over into an IRA, you may not be able to touch that money anyway. You may have zero liquidity to begin with. So liquidity might not be a factor. But even let's say it was a regular brokerage account and you said I wanted to reduce market risk, that reduced liquidity, you're probably not looking to take all of the money out at one time anyway. And if you had an emergency, uh, like a life event that um, you were, you were uh, paralyzed or you had to go into long-term care, there's different triggering events that would allow you to touch that money anyway without penalty. Very little maintenance. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to follow every little breaking news of what's happening in Europe, what's happening in Asia, what's going on with interest rates, what's happening with our, with our local economy, right? If you're not looking to follow all of that and get on the phone with a broker or a financial advisor all the time, this may be a good alternative for you because you can have the increases, right? But you're not going to have to worry about did I move the money in time? Did I make that necessary change? Do I have to get on the phone with my advisor the day that the stock market looks like it's tanking? In, in 2008, when really the stock market tanked, how many people were calling their advisor going, Was, is it, how bad is it, am I hit, am I hit? Imagine that that day occurs and you're not calling anybody saying, oh my God, am I hit, how bad, how bad is it, how bad is it, do I have to get out of the stock market? Do I sell, do I stay in, how long is this gonna last? Think about all those concerns that you may have had to have made or that you would have now if that happens again.